Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, I swear to God, G A W D. I, have, I always have to say that because I used to uh, swear to God, and then people would say, "Hey, uh, I like your channel, but can you stop taking the Lord's name in vain?" So I want to emphasize: this is not God, G O D. This is God, G A W D. Uh, God is an elvish sprite who exists outside of all of the Abrahamic faiths. So it's not taking the Lord's name uh, in vain. Uh, Gaud, G-A-W-D, uh, doesn't mind if you take his uh, name in vain, and he's actually kind of into it. So I swear to God, <laughs> Gaud, <laughs> that uh, my body threw a full tantrum uh, when I left the house. So uh, I've been getting a lot of stuff done, a lot of books out. Now there's only one late book. There used to be four. No, there was there was four late campaigns. It was actually six late books. Um, uh, but uh, now I just got to get Jawbreaker's uh, Grand Bazaar out. Uh, this is um, funny and sad at the same time. Aaron is ac <laughs> actually done drawing the next book. He just finished on Jawbreaker's Forever. So yeah, I, I got, I, I've had to do a lot of thinking um, because I'm bringing a bunch of characters back from the dead and I don't want it to be cheap. So I was creating the cosmology of the Jawbreaker's universe, which made me uh, do a deep dive into parallel universe theories, quantum entanglement, and uh, it's, uh, it's pretty complicated. And then I would, I would <laughs> think I had the answer, and I would uh, share it with some friends, and they're like, well, what about this? And then I would have to go uh, back to the drawing board. Now my cosmology is basically that there is infinity minus one parallel universes, but it's not that cheese ball stuff where it's like, there's a gay Asian Napoleon version of yourself. No, that would not be you. That would be a different person. So the idea is that literally, like for a million parallel timelines on either side of this one, you can't even tell that you're in one. Like you can actually be replaced or be switched out um, and as far as you know, everything's normal. But ripping through those parallel universes to grab you and pull you into another one does a lot of damage to those, and that's where I'm getting a lot of uh, storylines. But I had to think, and I had to think, and I had to research, and it took a while. And um, as I've said before, one of the things I hate is saying someone is dumb. Because that's something that dumb people say. That's what little kids say. They call each other dumb. And I always try to, uh, you know, uh, go, it can't be that. You know, this is, this is a, a grown person who can feed themselves and knows how to drive a car. And the more, it's just, the more you think about it, <laughs> almost all of these problems in comics, they just come down to a bunch of dumb people being in positions of power and or authority. I always bring up these uh, zines from the 80s, specifically Amazing Heroes uh, in Comics Interview. And they would have these interviews with comic pros that were 30 or 40 pages. And I'm not just talking about like Bill Finger, someone who had been working since the 1930s. I mean like Todd McFarlane in like the sixth year of his career would get <coughs> a 30 page interview. And you would know where he went to school, and you know, oh, he, he wanted to play baseball, and then there was an injury, and uh, you found out that he had a perm. I just thought he just, uh, that was his hair. It, I, you know, there was all these white guys in uh, the 80s who had that hair. Uh, Shatner's uh, wig at the time had that kind of perm, curl, you know, brown hair, and you don't see that anymore because it's a chemical process. I didn't know. I thought some people just, that's just how their hair grew. I didn't know. But, uh, okay, so I'm not going to say that Todd McFarlane was an intellectual. In fact, he was very, very middle class, and, and that was kind of uh, refreshing. But there was a lot of people who I would say were in, intelligent to intellectual. I mean, when you read uh, interviews with Denny O'Neill, Alan Moore, obviously, Ann Nascenti, uh Dennis Cowan, um, I, they had these interviews that I would, I've read dozens of times. And they were interesting, and they were thoughtful, and they were witty, and they were acerbic, and and they would uh, grasp with uh, ideas and 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 try them out from different uh, ways. And um, the first time 
I think more than ever since I've had this channel, since like four years now, four and a half years, um, my friends, my normie friends don't really care. They're kind of vaguely aware of it, uh, but it doesn't really come up in conversation. Uh, I would say investing comes up a lot more. By the way, oh my gosh, today was a good day. Today was such a good day that I had to go back to sleep because I wasn't able to emotionally handle it. One of the things I always do when it's a good day or a bad day is I say, how long did I have to patrol in Afghanistan to make this amount of money? And today, the, it was the entire deployment. So I was like, wow, OK, I'm just going to go back to sleep. I, I'm not sure how to uh, handle that. Uh, but they all brought up, um, uh, because it's been making the news, uh, you know, uh, Superman uh, is, uh, well, Superman's son is gay, bisexual. Bisexual in comics means you used to be straight and now you're gay. It doesn't mean you're actually bisexual. And then uh, some of these articles, and, they're, and they're, it's getting a lot of traction. It's popping up in like, like newspapers and you know, small towns are writing articles about this. So I'm having friends, some of whom I haven't heard from in years, you know, uh, saying like, hey, what's the deal with comics? What's going on? Like everyone's gay now? It's like, it's not that everyone's gay. It's that that's basically all that's spoken of. You know, I've been thinking about the comics from the last four years, and except for um, Jonathan Hickman, X-Men, Sean Gordon Murphy, uh, Batman White Knight, and um, various crowdfunders and controversies related to crowdfunders, basically all my memory of comics of the last four and a half years is just gay, the word gay. Uh, hiring gay people, changing characters to be gay, implying characters are gay, slowly whittling away. I just, <laughs> Leia Williams, is, she's, she's, she's setting the groundwork for Captain America there with uh, Kyle. And uh, that's just it. It's just gay. All right, what else do you have besides gay? So when I'm thinking about the modern creators, like, can you imagine a 40-page interview with Vida Ayala? <laughs> The funny thing is, back in the day, like in Comics Interview, you would have these little notes in brackets where it's like, you know, because they were literally recording on a tape recorder, and it's like, uh, I switched the, the tape, but uh, I lost 30 minutes because the audio was bad, and, and I'm not going to use that tape anymore. But here's a summary of what we discussed during those 30 minutes. Like, I just imagined this, and it's like, five minutes in, Vita got a blank look on her face and just started saying the word gay, Louder and louder, and then quieter and quieter, and then she started crying. She said she had to go to the bathroom, but then she never left the chair. Then she was quiet for 30 minutes. Uh, like, there's nothing to talk about. It's just like, tell us about yourself. I'm gay. Uh, tell us about your characters. They're gay. Would you like to say anything else? I don't like Nazis. Oh, it's brilliant. It's very very intellectual. I'm really, I've, I'm, I've been really challenged, you know, with your point of view. It, it, no, it's just dumb. So you look at all these decisions. Uh, why did they think grabbing literally a random lesbian from a community center to write a Marvel comic was a good idea? Well, they're dumb. Why did they go on Twitter to ask YouTube how to uh, false flag my channel because they had gotten two false flags approved, but they needed a third, and that wasn't being approved. Why would they do something like that? Well, they're dumb. Why did they hire Zoe Quinn you know, to write a, a book with no experience? They're dumb. Why did they still continue to spite hire Heather Antos four years after it was relevant to do so? They're dumb. Why did they keep going to the same two arguments for everything? It's because they're dumb. There's just a bunch of dummies that hired other dummies, and now we're just in this simple Simon idiot, you know, idiocracy uh, phase of uh, comics. You know, there's, there's a set, uh, phrase that A people hire A people, B people hire C people, and then lesbians just hire other lesbians. But dumb people hire other dumb people. So we're just in this sad, silly, you know, pushing on a pull door by the way, I'm, I'm frustrated about that because I wanted to use a dumb and dumber image. And there needs to be some sort of congressional investigations, 60 minutes 
expose on what the fuck happened to search engines in the last, I'm going to say two years. Search engines were brilliant for like 20 years. Intuitive, accurate. And now I type in dumb and dumber and it shows me almost exclusively images from the sequel that came out, what, like 10 years ago, eight years ago? Then they show me a couple of pictures from the prequel, which came out like 15 years ago, and then way down there, it shows actual pictures from Dumb and Dumber, and not very many of them, like the same four pictures. I'm like, what the hell? First of all, everyone forgot there was a prequel. The sequel was so bad, it was worse than the prequel. Like, anyway, I'm very, I'm very, I wanted a Dumb and Dumber, and I couldn't find any good one, so I had to use this push, uh, you know, uh, pulling, what is it? I don't know, pushing the pull door. Except for I think I've already used that. But um, yeah, like all of these, like, e you even look at Krakoa. Now, I don't think that Hickman is dumb. Um, I do believe he's autistic. I'm not using that as an insult. I'm using that as a, what I believe to be an accurate description. But every interpretation of his idea has been stupid as hell. To the point where even like people who review and Bleeding Cool are like, the mutants are just always like milling about because you have a, a bunch of dummies trying to write in a concept created by an intelligent man and they don't know how to do it. I like Kukoa because it means the people who aren't, who aren't like you, they ought to stay away. I don't like people who are different than me, so I just want to be with my friends. Oh really, what would you do on this magical segregationist island? I'd stand near my friends. They, they don't know. <laughs> Every story, they're just milling about. They have no idea what to do with this concept at all. And then weirdly enough, when put to a vote, they just want it to continue indefinitely. It's, it's, it's dumb. It's, <laughs> that's the unified, if you're wondering about all the great conspiracies, about all the stupidity for the last five years in comics, it's just dumb people making dumb decisions, government name decisions to them, because by the transitive factor, oh, trans, get into that, every, there's not going to be anything intelligent. In fact, people who are intelligent are basically re realizing, I need to leave. <laughs> like, these vicious morons are going to eat me alive the longer I'm around them. Oh, yeah, there's another dumb one. Why did Mags think that Me Tooing on love bombing was going to work? Dumb. It's, it, it always comes back to that. You just have a bunch of people who just aren't very intelligent. And they make stupid decisions, and they make petty decisions, and they make them over and over again, and they never, ever learn. They, uh, you don't like my story? You're Nazi. You're Nazi. What? And the... <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why I always say, like, it's not like, I always say, like, no one would say this face to face. And it's not meant aggressively, like, oh, I'd punch you if you'd said that. You would literally see the reaction in the other person's, it's like, imagine going to someone's boss. It's like, hello, I, I'd like to speak to the, uh, the boss here. I'd like to speak to the CEO. They're like, oh, really? Uh, what's the deal? You're just selling something? Uh, I'm uh, giving something to you. Information about one of your employees. Did you know they made a rude joke? Well, I'm just going to leave. Like, <laughs> even to the secretary, you'd be embarrassed. You're, so, so she's like, so you're tattletaling on someone you've never met and you want me to go get a very busy, wealthy man to come down here so you can, you can tattle to him? What, what are, are we we're supposed to fire? We're supposed to fire him for something rude. He said, 10 years before, what? You, you would just get embarrassed. You would stop in the middle of it. You're like, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just joking. Yeah, um, uh, my car battery uh, died. Anyone here have jumper cables? No, uh, it's fine. I got AAA, it's fine. <laughs> you wouldn't do this. You would feel too stupid. Uh, one of the many uh, bad things about, oh, bad. That's the other thing. Have you noticed how often they use the word bad? Yes, I know. I just use, I have a headache. That's why I, I used a very simple uh, word. How, how many times do they use the word bad? Besides me, when I have a headache, 
besides Michael Jackson. What intelligent, grown person do you know regularly uses the word bad? Children use the word bad. You're a bad person. And that makes you good? Yeah. When I'm poor, you're bad. You're bad. You're on the wrong side of history. <laughs> they just repeat random phrases. They have no... Trust me, I have a bachelor's degree in history. Words, actual quotes... They don't make history. Very, very rarely. It has to be a president. It has to be something significant. Um, actions. There's never been a group of history that was like, and these people said rude jokes, and they were thrown into a volcano, and it was just... No. Rude jokes do not make history. <laughs> especially when they're very, very obviously jokes. And especially when your whole shtick is like obsessively watching five-hour live streams to take a very obvious, very obvious joke out of context and pretend to be offended by it. He's bad. No, he's making a joke. You're mentally ill. <laughs> like, that's just it. And then you, I'm going to wrap this up because when you start talking about the stupid things happening in comics right now, you just will talk forever. But uh, there are people who are very far left Occupy Wall Street, they support Antifa, and they wake up every day to stand for corporations, <laughs> to attack small businesses and harm small businesses, to support corporations who don't, that don't even pay them, that don't even pay them. They just do this for free. Idiots. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, yeah, sadly enough, that's the answer. Uh, there's just a bunch of dummies doing dumb shit. And that's why you keep seeing the same mistakes made over and over. You keep seeing them, the same excuses. It's amazing how many uh, Nazis there are around dumb people who can't learn from their own mistakes. So anyway, uh, wow, uh, this headache is uh, continuing. Thanks for watching. Bye.